What are you thinking? <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's good all coming apart. Okay, so we've taken the headsail off because it's falling apart and we have to buy a new one. Yeah, it's headsail's pooping its pants. And when I put the new front beam and launcher on and everything on, our beam angles up like this now. And because of that, that makes the fort stay requirement to be shorter. And it's not quite able to be short enough. So we've actually got too much rake in the mast. And I've known we've had this problem um, since we did that. But it hasn't been too much of an issue, but I'd like to fix it because I actually have the opportunity where there's somebody close by to hopefully reswage this uh, wire. And it'd be cool to actually have it set up properly after what, two years <laughs> um, with the correct rake. And um, so that, yeah, we can sail big miles again on um, a boat that's set up correctly. See the turnbuckles pretty much bottomed out where the threads are fully closed. Um, so I'll go and chop the fitting off the other end. That'll then give me enough scope to then um, shorten and lengthen the forestay around the desired rake so that we can play a little bit. Um, but at the moment I can't play at all because we're fully in and we've still got too much rake. Maxed out. Maxed out. That's cool though, I think. It's all surviving really yeah. nicely. Yeah, so that's, that's really cool as well. No issues at all. Yeah, and it's definitely seen some action. So we've got the inner force bay on now. Yep. And you can see how. Yeah, it's not quite set up properly. So I've changed it to a three to one setup. So I ordered this three to one fitting from KZ for the bottom. And unfortunately, this bit doesn't fit in this bit. So that was a little disappointing, but anyway. Um, so when I had it two to one, it came in here, around here and onto there. With the three to one, it comes in here, over here, around there and back. So I actually need to put a friction ring in this one instead of just going 180 like this. But it just means I've got a get a smaller friction ring and sort this all out properly. But that's going to hold the rig up while we Cor take the four stay off. Correct.
Okay, so I've put together this latest video and it's uh, mostly about you taking off the force day and shortening it because when we put the new beam on, our original beam, like most catamaran beams, is flat. And when we made the new carbon front beam, it goes like this. And that wasn't, actually that wasn't the original plan, was it? Because we were looking for a longer piece of carbon to just do a flat one, but we couldn't find anything that was long enough. So the solution was we could find two shorter bits. And actually I'm really glad that we did it that way because it actually looks really cool, doesn't it? Yeah, it worked out really well. Yeah. So we're super happy with it. It was quite funny if you've seen the video of you making it because it, the glue moved during the night, didn't it? And it slid down like about two mil or something. Do you remember? And you were just defeated. <laughs> so yesterday we glued on the front beam and it was all perfectly lined up and everything. And now it, this beam, this end, it slid down a tiny bit, and it causing this to be pushed off a, a little bit to port, a little bit to port. So what you're saying is the beam is now not centered and... Well, the bowsprit isn't. Oh, the bowsprit's not centered. Yeah. That's not centered. And how's your dad feel about that? Pretty buggered. How you feel about that? Hey, Dad. Stay in the way, stay in the way. But actually, it's fantastic. Um, and the only downside has been that the fourth day is now just a little bit too long. So the solution has always been we'll just chop the four stay because there's no point in us buying new wire or well whatever we're going to do you know it'd be nice to do something composite or whatever further down the track but those wires are pretty new so yeah. use them until it's time to replace them and then we can do something new yep so the solution was take the four stay off take the toggle end why the toggle end and not the threaded end? Because the toggle was easier to find. Um, oh, a new toggle, yes. The new yeah. toggle in, in the islands was easier to find than a threaded piece. Yep. And then how much did we take off? 250 millimeters. Oh, so it was quite a bit. So why... Well, it was the minimum length you could take off. So with a swage eye, the wire is buried inside of the terminal and then squished and that's what they call cold fused when they um, swage it and to remove it you obviously have to chop that fitting off to bare wire uh, and that berry is usually on 12 mil wire or half inch wire like ours um, it's about 250 millimeters so you're always going to lose 250 millimeters uh, on a wire of the size that we had um, if you're going to replace the toggle. fitting. Mm. Yep. I guess what I want to talk about is, is mast rate. Why is it important? Like why, why is that most multi-holes will have rake in the mast? What's the, the sort of the thought process behind it and hmm. why, why can you have too much? Well just talk about whether your boat has enough rake or too much rake because that affects the balance of the boat and that's mm. most important. So it could be, it doesn't matter what boat it is, the rake has to be correct for your boat. And the critical piece of that puzzle is so that the boat is balanced. You probably hear me harping on about balancing the boat by trimming the sails. You can trim out uh, incorrectly tuned uh, rig where the rake is too far forward or too far back by adjusting the sails. But this is not a good solution because um, it greatly affects the performance. We had a certain trimaran that a client of ours had, was having a lot of trouble with and um, it was out of 
tune where it had too much rake and it was so bad that you could not actually pull the mainsail on without the boat rounding up and going into irons. Now what happens is with more rake the mast moves aft and so does the center of effort of all of the sails that are attached to it. What happens is the center of effort of the sails moves aft of what we call the center of lateral resistance or the pivot point of the boat under the water and that creates a lever. So if the center of effort of the sails is too far behind the pivot point or the center of lateral resistance, it just wants to turn the yacht around. Um, so what you'll tend to find is you pull the main sheet on and trim the sails like normal and you have too much weather helm. So there's too much feedback and too hard to hang onto the steering wheel. Um, the other uh, indicator is if you've got you know a hydraulic steering like ours and you can't feel that feedback is that the boat will keep wanting to spin out or round up into the wind or just always wanting to go into irons won't come out of attack um, doing slow maneuvers like we sail off the anchor quite often um, you want to go and do that maneuver and it's very difficult to come off the anchor pull the headsail on and bear away and sail away. So that's an indication that you've got too much rake uh, when you can't make these maneuvers. When the boat's balanced, obviously, all of this works well and easy. easy. If you don't have enough rake, this is actually quite a dangerous situation. You end up with what's called lee helm. And lee helm's quite dangerous because what it does is it bears the yacht away or it turns downwind. Now when a yacht turns upwind, it depowers itself. When a yacht turns downwind, it powers itself up. And you don't have to be an expert to figure out that that's not a safe situation. So hmm. Lee Helm and, and not enough rake um, is generally a bad thing. Um, and that's something you want to address very quickly if your boat suffers from it. So to rectify the problem we had, where we had too much rake, it was pretty easy. We just shortened the forestay and eased out and lengthened the side stays. Uh, yeah, and to lengthen the side stays, you just had to make new strops. Yes, yeah, because we have um, soft links between the mast and the stainless steel wire. I just made up new loops to to accommodate the new position of of the mast which was meant that i can keep my turnbuckle in its normal mid-range so that was nice and easy hmm. say nice and easy wasn't that easy in the <laughs> middle of the caribbean <laughs> with no materials and at anchor and all and the rest of it with, with a deadline <laughs> yeah so does our the movement of that brig further upright that's going to change shooting angles? Yep, absolutely. It has a huge knock-on effect throughout the rig and the boat. Um, so if you're going to start playing with your rake, then you've got to yep. be aware that you might have <laughs> yeah. a lot of yeah. associated peripheral yep. damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you put more rake Challenges. in, the boom's going to hit whatever's <laughs> it's just missing. Yeah. Uh, if you take rake out, your boom's going to leave a bigger gap than it had before. Uh, likewise, if you have the clue of a headsail, which is close to a, a, a car or um, a, a jib track or something like that, uh, more rake means that it's going to come down and potentially touch the deck if it was close, um, or it will get further away and it will change all the sheeting angles as well because the sails are moving and rotating around, so all your upwind trim settings um, mm, will be, be all too. thrown out. Yeah.
you see we've got a new head sold, but we're going to save that discussion for a dedicated video on its own, I think. Hmm. Because we want to talk a bit about sales and sale options. And